Hello. So today we're going to look at some common carry uh, calibers. Everybody's got their own choice of guns that they carry. So um, what I'm what I did is I took out all these are the common um, calibers from 22 all the way up to 44 Magnum. And um, I brought them out, shot a water bottle, watched them explode. So we're going to do a quick look at each of the calibers and what kind of damage they do and see what people like to carry. So the first gun on the list that um, we're going to look at was the um, 177 caliber BB gun. So that's what it fires. And it's a CO2 cartridge thing. And I used a Glock 19 pellet gun. And these are the, the CO2. This is the uh, BBs that I use. Now, a... Um, BB out of a gun like this, going at about, you know, 500 and something feet per second, which this is going to be somewhere, give or take, that'll produce three foot pounds of energy. And as you can see, uh, three foot pounds of energy didn't even break the water bottle. I thought I was missing, but um, I, did, I did hit it and it did virtually nothing. So it's definitely not a very uh, good option for self-protection. But I figured I'd start low and it's more for fun to see what a 22 can do. I mean, a pellet gun can do. So uh, let's go on to the next. So the next on the list, because of the uh, BB didn't work very good, um, I wanted to see what the like the max pellet gun could do so this is um this is pellets this is what i was using 7.4 grain and i shot it out of a ruger blackhawk elite rifle so this is producing about 1250 feet per second for velocity and at that speed and that weight it's about 11 foot pounds of energy so um would it be deadly well, I mean, it goes right through a water bottle. Uh, it doesn't explode or anything. So if it hits something vital, it might be deadly. But uh, it's not exactly the perfect self-defense round. But I figured I'd throw this in just so that way we've got some kind of a baseline. So next on the list is a twenty-two long rifle. Now, a lot of people are... Like, oh, that's not very good self-defense round. And this is what a 22 long rifle looks like. Um, well, it may not be, but if you can't uh, can't handle a bigger gun because you're recoil sensitive or something, then 22 is an option. So this is uh, the Glock 44. I tried to stick with uh, mostly Glocks for the tests. And these are 40 grain. 22 long rifles and those are producing uh, because of the speed and the weights they're about 131 foot pounds of energy so um and as you can see with the water bottle it goes right through a water bottle so um if you were shooting at a person you would probably be able to kill them if you hit it in a vital spot i mean if you hit them in a non-vital area he may not, he may bleed out, but I mean, if you hit him in the heart or, you know, in the head or something like that, then it can definitely be legal. But, yeah, so that's a 22 long rifle. So the next on the uh, list is the 22 Magnum, which has got considerably more power than a 22. These are what I was firing. And a 22 Magnum will produce about going at about 1875 feet per second it'll produce about 324 foot pounds of energy which is actually quite a bit of energy for such a small bullet so that's how it does a lot of the damage it'll just zip right through um you may get over penetration um 
Yeah, you know, and I used the Taurus revolver because I didn't have a semi-automatic uh, .23. But as you can see, it definitely goes right through the water bottle, no problem, and it even explodes it. So, and that's the 22 Magnum. So the next caliber we're going to look at is the 380. Uh, and this is what I was using, the 90 green 380s. Um, jacket at hollow point and I used the Glock 42 and um, this 380 will produce about, uh, about 980 feet per second it will produce about 203 foot pounds of energy so uh, definitely it's enough to kill someone um, as you can see with the water bottle it just blows it right up um, so there's some debate whether or not it's got enough power, knockdown power and stuff. Um, it may not, you know, shoot through thick uh, clothes or whatever. But if it definitely, if you're close range, a 380 will definitely be lethal. So the next round we're going to look at is the 9mm. And of course, this is probably the most uh, common caliber that people carry um uh, i was shooting these today for the water bottles they're the critical defense by hornady um i've also got like hydro shocks that i've used these are, i've had for a while so i figured i'd use those but um yeah so the nine millimeter uh it travels at about 1180 feet per second and that'll produce about 350 foot pounds of energy so it's definitely uh lethal and it'll go through a lot of you know uh garments and stuff like that so it's got pretty good penetration for the uh the power factor and the nice thing about nine millimeters you can get you know pretty high capacity guns like you know this is the glock 17 which is what i use and it's got 17 it's got a 17 round mag and you can get ones that have you know 20 round mags and stuff for more but and as you can see it has no problem you know it's blowing up a water bottle so the next caliber on our list is a 38 special this and you know, these are 158 grain uh full metal jacket and uh i fired it out of a model 13 smith and wesson uh and you know the 38 special had was the mainstay of police revolvers for the longest time uh so at, traveling at 940 feet per second it produce about 310 foot pounds of energy so it's less than a nine millimeter but um it's still pretty pretty powerful and if you get some of the plus p's you can get almost the same as an, a nine millimeter um so you know, as you can see the water bottle it just explodes a water bottle so yeah it's definitely a very common round and it's still used today in a lot of firearms. The 38 stub nose is still a very popular handgun. So, uh, and that's the 38 special. So, the next caliber we're going to look at is the 357 Magnum. Uh, these are 158 grain uh, bullets, they're jacketed. Uh, these are soft points, but you can get hollow points and all that. And. The 357 is one of my favorite calibers. Uh, and I was using the Model 13 Smith & Wesson today. And a 357, 158 grain one, traveling at about 1,240 feet per second, will produce 539 foot-pounds of energy. So you're talking almost double what a 38 Special can do with the same bullet. So it's definitely a, a big increase. When they came out, they were considered, you know, the best police round because of the stopping power. And, you know, they're just an incredible round. They get an excellent penetration. 
And as you can see with the water bottle, it just blows up the water bottle. So, uh, yeah, so that's the 357 Magnum. Again, that's one of my favorites. So, the next one on the list is the 45 ACP. Now, um, this is like a 230 grain jacketed hollow points. Um, so, and basically, uh, it'll travel at about 850 feet per second and produce about 369 foot pounds of energy. Um, now, they, it varies a little bit, but so it's got a little bit more knockdown power than the nine millimeter, you know. So, and it's very common round. Everybody loves the 45. It's the American round. And I was using the Glock 21. And as you can see, like some of them are getting to be high capacity. So they're not like the old fashioned eight rounders. I mean, this will hold 13 rounders um, or 13 rounds of 45 ACP, which is quite a bit of firepower. And as you can see, Close the water bottles apart. So, uh, yeah. So, again, that's the 45 ACP. So, the next caliber on our list is the 40 Smith & Wesson. Uh, these these were 180 grains. And they were a uh, full metal jacket. But, um, according to the data... A uh, 40 Smith & Wesson 165 grain one will travel at about 1130 feet per second and produce about 468 um, foot-pounds of energy. So that's pretty good. It's more than the 45. You can get 45s that produce about that kind of energy. And I used my uh, Glock 40. I got a conversion barrel to shoot 40 Smith & Wessons out of it. And as you can see, they have no problem blowing apart a water bottle. So yeah. penetration on the 40 is pretty good. Um, it came from the 10 millimeter that was um, downloaded because the FBI didn't like a full power 10 millimeter. So that's where the 40 Smith & Wesson came from. Um, it's kind of gone a little bit more into obscurity. Um, it's still very popular, but... It, nine millimeters now you can get nine millimeters it'll, it worked just as good so more people prefer to go with the nine millimeter because of the uh, cost but um it's still a great caliber so that's the 40 smith and wesson so the next caliber we're going to look at is the 10 millimeter and that's what i was using today it's just 180 grain bullets and that's what the 10 millimeter looks like this is one of my favorite semi-automatic uh, rounds out there. So a 10 millimeter, 180 grain, you know, you can get an average velocity of about 1300 feet per second. And the uh, foot pounds of energy is 708 at that velocity. So uh, when you think about it, that's more than twice what a nine millimeter has for energy. So it's definitely got a lot more uh, power to it. But it's got a lot more kick, too. And I was using the uh, Glock 20. I tried to well, stay in with most of the Glocks for these things. But And, of course, the water bottle just blows apart. So, and the nice thing about the uh, 10 millimeters is, like, this is a 15-round capacity. So you get a lot more rounds than a 45, usually, um, with a lot more power. But... That's the 10 millimeter. So the last one we're going to look at on the list is the 44 Magnum. Now, the ones that I shot were 240 grain, um, just regular round nose. This is a hollow point, but it's the same idea. You can see the, the size and stuff. And the uh, 44 Magnum at 1180 feet per second will produce about 741 foot pounds of energy. But um they have ones that are definitely loaded a lot hot, hotter and that can kick the uh power the, you know the foot pounds of energy up over 11 1200 pounds so um these definitely can be loaded a lot hotter and uh 
They're just incredible powerhouses compared to most of the other calibers. Now, not everybody can handle a 44 Magnum. Uh, this is the six inch barrel version and it uh, got quite a bit of recoil to it, but uh, it's not as bad as some of the other guns, but uh, Magnum loads, that's the problem with them is not everybody can handle the uh, high recoil. But, um, so that's the 40, it's the 44 Magnum. So here's all the different uh, calibers. Uh, so this is 22, 22 Magnum, 380, 9mm, 45 ACP, 40 Smith & Wesson, 10mm, 38 Special, 357, and 44 Magnum. So that's what each one looks like compared to each other's. So um, it'd be interesting to know what you guys think. What, what caliber do you prefer? Which one do you carry? And do you carry different ones? I carry all the different ones. So uh, to me... They're all great, you know, so be curious to see what uh, most people carry for a standard caliber. I'm sure 9mm is there on the top, but I bet you 40 and the 40 Smith and, uh, the 40 Smith and Wesson and the 45 ACP are very common, and so isn't the 38 Special. But I hope you enjoyed the video, and hope you have a good day.